Good evening, folks. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics Unfiltered. Happy holidays. Happy New Year's. Freddie wins. What? This is Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics Unfiltered. On last episode of the new year, that's what I'm say. I'm still here. Good evening, folks. I just want to go over some of the uh, highlights, I guess, of uh, the past year 2023. What were some of the highlights here? And I'm not trying to be negative some of them some folks might think they're a bit negative uh, anyway folks good evening i'm freddie vaswood this is basement politics uh happy holidays hope you had a, a great christmas you know um and i'm hoping that this next year brings you much more happiness uh success and health which is very important folks so uh god bless you all thank you for joining me uh i want to go over some of the things of 2023 uh you know things that have happened you know, primarily here in politics in the city of Yonkers. Uh, and one of the biggest deals is uh, the term limit extension, right? Although that happened at the end of uh, last year, but there were a group of residents, I termed them the uh, term limit 12, who filed a lawsuit uh, to try and stop the term limit extension. Uh, but in April of this year, a judge ruled in favor of New York City's, I'm sorry, of the city of Yonkers. So that was one of the things that happened 23 right the lawsuit and so as a result this year mayor mike spano won for a fourth term right many people happy about it some people not happy about it right so that was probably one of the biggest things that happened this year is the uh you know the the re-election of mike spano that was uh with a lot of controversy as you may already know he was challenged by councilman uh, Anthony Moranti, as you see there, um, didn't do as well as he thought he was going to do. The mayor getting what over 15,000 votes, although that's still pretty low, but he got a lot more than Anthony Moranti did. And Anthony Moranti spent a lot of money out here. I mean, he spent his own money. He didn't really do these big fundraisers, right? He didn't have all these developers that were funding his campaign, but he still spent, I hear, uh, about $200,000 of his own money. 200 and someone said you know all that money he spent why didn't anthony moranti just do a poll to see if he even had a chance and i'm not sure if he did a poll but maybe he should have thought about doing a poll to see if people were going to vote for him see how well he did in that poll uh but instead he spent you know 200 grand on that election really quick uh i i, I put up a post and some people were a bit confused by it right it, I just want to share this real quick. This is what somebody I, I didn't I don't know. I didn't get my um it's very nasty people, you know, things that people write here on um Facebook about me. So just in case you were wondering why I put that post up, someone uh tagged me and said, I'm gonna get basement politics, Freddie Vasquez's wife. This is stuff I deal with, a strap on so that she can finally F him in the rear end like he needs, because at this point he's making it obvious that he is D list miserable little rat. His wife got fired from Yonkers Public Schools because of their fraud credentials, which is not true. And her sleeping with an administrator. Oh man, gotta ask my wife about that. This man comes with the people, comes to for, for the people, then hides behind the police. I'm not sure what they're talking about. It's time to get gritty. Please come for me because I love to handle ish in person. I can't wait to meet you and your manly wife so I can give this, you know, dildo to you. Fine. Like, so I, I just responded. I said, you know, I didn't get my, you know. I was hoping to get that this year, right? But that's what that was about. So, you know, this, you know, I, I try to give information to people on politics here in the city of Yonkers, right? Some people may not like it, uh, you know, although it's facts, right? And this is a result of uh, a post that someone else actually created and I shared it. But folks, it's a fact. This, you know, and I'm not being disrespectful or rude or talking about, you know, anyone's wife and being vulgar about it, you know? So, um, just in case you were wondering what that was about, you know, these are stuff that I deal with, right? Uh, very nasty, very vulgar. 
uh, but it didn't work. And so what else happened in 2023, right? Not much from Shanae Williams, the uh, District 1 councilwoman who just sat back idly as her district uh, has been overdeveloped, right? With luxury rentals and movie studios pushing a lot of people out, causing some businesses to close, some people having to uh, sell their properties as the uh, movie studios wanted the land, right? And Shanae Williams, who recently won her election for county legislator, she's going to be going back uh, up to the county. But what did she do all 2023 to help many residents who have been now complaining about the rising rents, especially in that area? People who are looking for a place to live. You know, we have an affordable housing crisis. And to be fair, it's not just Yonkers. It's not even just Westchester County. It's not even just in America. But even in Toronto, there were protests uh, in regards to affordable housing uh, and the crisis that's going on there. So there's an affordable housing crisis throughout the world, I would imagine. But here in Yonkers, we definitely uh, see that there's a need for more affordable housing. But we've get, been getting mostly luxury developments. Developments, apartments that require folks to make uh, about $130,000, $125,000, $150,000 a year which is not the average income for a person in the city of Yonkers, right? The average household income is just over $60,000. So how are people going to, you know, afford these apartments? And what it's also has done is uh, caused the properties around these luxury developments and throughout the city for that matter to go up as now other investors come in, buy up the smaller properties, have been renovating them and raising the rent. So people have reached out to me, people have complained at city council meetings in regards to the overdevelopment, the developments uh, uh, being placed in certain uh, um, areas that just didn't seem right. You know, the zoning changes that have occurred, people have protested that, right? And also the rising rents, you know, many people are, now deciding to uh, leave Yonkers and many people have left Yonkers. You know, many people have left the state of New York. This is probably one of the biggest states where people are leaving, the most people are leaving. But we've also seen a lot of people coming into Yonkers and I've seen people or have met people from different places, from Texas, uh, Vermont, uh, New Jersey, obviously, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, from um, other places in the Midwest, Georgia, down south. And, you know, I'm wondering, what were they coming up here for? You know, it's beautiful out there. It's a lot more land. You get a lot more for your dollar. But some people, you know, have come from other places. But we see mostly, you know, a lot of people having to leave uh, because of the cost of rents, uh, people moving up north as a result of, of the rising rents here in the city of Yonkers. And if you haven't noticed, it's really changing. The downtown area is I mean, I want to call it gentrification, right? But I don't, it's not really just all white people, really. But it's a lot of changes that are happening, a lot of people coming from the city. And it's really getting that city-like feel. It really does have that feel when you're down there now. And so it's really changing the area down there. Um, you see more affluent people, more, you know, people with higher income. It's obvious, you know, uh, you can tell just by the way they dress, you know, the cars that they're driving. I'm seeing a lot more high-end cars in the downtown area, you know, a lot more high-end cars, you know. And so you can see, you can really tell. And I also noticed when I was at the shop right the other day in the downtown area that the parking lots were more full with cars, right? And so that shop right has been frequent by a lot of people in the area who didn't have cars. They would walk there, which is why, you know, losing that shop right where there were rumors that it would be going, um, you know, was really concerning to people because they don't have a car, you know, getting to another supermarket, especially one that's affordable, would then become difficult or more expensive. But as we see more people moving into the area, people with higher incomes, uh, you know, people who have cars and multiple cars, you're starting to see the ShopRite area, the CVS parking lots full with cars, you know. And so that also tells me that people are not coming here to take public transportation like they're hoping. Right. They're allowing some of these developments to go up with less of the required parking spaces. Right. So they're hoping that people are going to take public transportation. But people are coming with cars. And so if people are coming with one and two cars and there's less parking, what does that mean for, you know, the parking situation here in the downtown area? It's going to get horrible. It's 
it's going to get very bad if it hasn't already. I don't really have to deal with this, so I don't know how bad it really is getting. All right. But I'm sure that it's, it's, it's gotten bad. And, um, and you know, people have complained also about the stop sign over there, Main Street and Warburton, as they do construction is very difficult there. So just be careful over there. But so I'm seeing this. I'm seeing a lot more affluent folks, a lot more cars, you know, in the area is getting very, very busy down there. And so what does this mean for the folks who were living there, folks who are on fixed incomes, folks who are not generating this higher income in order to be able to sustain themselves in that area as everything goes up? Right. So what has, you know, our elected officials done for that? You know, we've seen some apartments go up of all affordable building. They're building one on Main Street, McQuest, and it should be done by 2026. That's going to have 76 units, but there's uh, and then they're going to be all affordable. But even people who have affordable units are complaining because their rents are going up. And even though they have an affordable unit, they uh, can't afford it. It's not they're not their their income is not going up. Right. They're still on the same, you know, making the same amount, but their rent is going up and they can't keep up with it. And some, you know, and I've spoken to people who are you know, wondering what's going to happen in the next year or so. Are they going to be able to maintain their apartment? Um, you know, and some of them have kids. You know, what does this mean for them? It's, you know, it's very a struggle and people are struggling also to find work. You know, some people are having to get three jobs, you know, two and three jobs just to maintain the, you know, their lifestyle, which is not to say that they're living a, a you know, very expensive lifestyle, but just even to maintain the status quo for them. So it's getting very difficult, difficult for people, you know, and so I just want to put that out there that our elected official, Shanae Williams, now that you're going to be up at the county, you know, hopefully you can do something, you know, to really address this housing situation and maybe curb these rents. You know, they can't just continue to go up, right? He's, you know, so th th you have to do something. You're at the county now, right? The migrants, right? We saw uh, uh, migrants come into the city of Yonkers. Uh, they made... Um, the city of Yonkers, their home, they settling uh, or settled up at the Ramada Inn. You know, uh, I got mixed reviews about this. I, you know, I'm very confused. You know, um, some people don't like the fact that migrants are here, you know, all throughout the country. And it's not just white people. It's not a racial thing. You know, I've seen blacks. I've seen Hispanics upset about the migrants. And then, I, you know, I put stuff out there. You know, uh, I put a question on Nextdoor app, like, what would you like to see happen with the migrants that are in the Ramada? And I mean, they have to go somewhere and they're only being given up until February, I believe, of next year where they're going to go. Again, we, there's a housing crisis. The people that are already here are struggling already to find affordable housing. Where are these individuals going to go? A lot of women with children. And so some people like give me this negative feedback in the comments. Oh, uh, you know, what do you mean? You know, they deserve to be here. They, you know, they, OK, I'm just asking a question. Right. But at the end of the day, it's not that I'm being mean or people who are upset, you know, are anti-migrants and just hate these people. That's not what it's about. It's about the impact that it's going to have to the community. People just say, oh, you know, we got to give them housing. And yeah, but that costs money. That's cost money. Right. We have an obligation now that children are here. Migrant children are here to educate them. Right. That costs money. It costs the city of Yonkers, what, twenty four, twenty six thousand dollars a year per child. So you add more children, migrant children whose parents are not contributing or haven't been contributing, you know, tax wise. Right. And maybe they'll start getting a job, but really they have not been. And now we are obligated to pay an additional twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars a year for this child when the city is already strapped for cash especially when it comes to education so where did we have what cuts do we have to make then right you see what i'm saying so people don't think about that it's just like what, what do you have endless money just an endless you know housing that that we you know so, and then they say well they also are going to be enrolled in esl classes that costs money who's paying for the esl classes who's paying the teachers Who's paying for the, you know, the place that's going to facilitate it? That costs money. Where does that money come from? You see what I'm saying? So it's not that I'm being negative. So, you know, chill out, folks. Relax. You know, we have to think about these things. You have a child in the school system, the public school system is going to have an impact. Right. You have a group of, of migrant children who are not speaking the language. Now they have to, you know, adjust for that. They have to adapt for that. And so. What is, you know, uh, um, taken away as a result? 
You see, and then it impacts your child in the public schools, right? We, there's so much that's needed. So you have to think about that. You know, what's going to happen with the migrants? You know, personally, me, I'm for sending them back to their home. You know, I think at least the humane thing is to do to make sure that they get back to their home safely. I've seen some of them saying that they're ready to go back. You know, this is not what they thought it was going to be. I mean, literally crying because of the situation that they now find themselves in and some of them with their kids. You know, let's send them back. That's what we should do. Let's we cannot afford this. Send them back. Right. You know, it's time to go back. Time to go home. You know, uh, um, they're paying. You, I don't know if you know this. And, and I know people that are housing migrant children who are getting paid between two thousand to three thousand dollars a month here in Yonkers. I don't know if any folks know this. This is a fact. So I know people that are housing migrant children. They're getting between two and three thousand dollars a month. And so, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people out there that's going to see this as a hustle. I mean, in fact, you know, I was talking to someone who has, they foster kids in, right? Migrant children who knows someone else that has the migrant children that's fostering them as well. That's not taking good care of them. And she feels bad. The person that I know treats them like that's their own kid. This is what I appreciate. I respect that because... They're dressed nice, like they're decked out. I'm like, you know, maybe you don't, you know, you know, they don't need, you know, name brand stuff, right? Um, but they're getting between two and three thousand dollars. So you get somebody out there looking for, you know, come on, a lot of people are looking to make money now. They need the extra dough. They're gonna take in these migrant children, you know, make that extra two, three thousand dollars. And so where's that money coming from? How many, you know, uh, children, how many people are fostering kids getting two to three thousand dollars? How much is being spent on this? All right. This is what's happening. This is it's like a hustle, I think, because they you know, these, there's these organizations that get money, federal money. Right. In order to take care of these kids. So if they bring them into the country and then they house them, they can charge the government, the federal government to pay them. And they'll pay these people, you know, two to three thousand dollars per kid per month, maybe more, because I'm sure the agency that the people are going through are receiving more money. They make money. So, right. So, if a person's getting two to three thousand for fostering the kid, that agency is probably getting five to six thousand from the federal government for that child. So, this is what's happening. It's happening here in the city of Yonkers. I know people that are fostering kids. So, you know, it's just about the money. It's about, you know, it's a strain on resources here in the city and here in the country that are already strained. Right? You don't have a real sensible solution, right? Um, so moving on, 16-year-old uh, uh, this year was indicted, the 16-year-old uh, that killed Detective Sergeant Frank Goldino in the crash on Tuckahoe Road, the 16-year-old unlicensed driver who was driving recklessly, you know, in, in many of people's opinion, uh, and crashed, losing control of his car, crashing into Detective Sergeant Frank Goldino, who was in his um, police vehicle at the time. Uh, he died. Uh, it also crashed into a Liberty Line bus. Uh, I'm not sure if people were injured uh, on the bus, uh, but he was eventually indicted. You know, many people were upset about this. Um, they were wondering if any charges were going to be brought. And uh, and then we saw charges being brought just before the election. So many said this was strategically done, right, just before the elections, because many people were upset. I'm sure there are a lot of people that are secretly upset that are not speaking out because, you know, Yonkers... <laughs> You can't say nothing. You speak out. You become a target. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a family member of these people in the cabal. If you speak out against anything here in Yonkers, you are out. That's it. You are out. So people are staying hush hush. A lot of people were upset about it. And so just before the elections, we see that there was an indictment. However, it's going to be tried in family court. And so people are having issue with that. You know, again, this is like uh, my next thing here with Stephen Dolan, who was... Um, this year, who was uh, sentenced uh, for the death of 16-year-old C.J. Hackett. If you don't know, Stephen Dolan, city employee who was driving drunk um, on McLean Avenue and hit and killed C.J. Hackett, 16-year-old boy who was on an electric scooter. He stopped, looked back, got back in the van and took off. And uh, he wasn't arrested until about 23, 20 some hours later uh, at work in City Hall. You know, and so people wonder why did it take so long for him to get arrested? Uh, and then they were wondering what 
you know, charges he would be would be filed, how much time he would get. So this year we got to know uh, the result. He was sentenced to one and a half to four and a half years for the death of a 16 year old boy because he decided to drive drunk, drinking at least this is from, you know, what they see in cameras, at least 17 drinks. In fact, he was getting into his vehicle with the drink in his hand. So he made this conscious decision to do something illegal, something dangerous, get into a vehicle that now becomes a lethal weapon when someone is inebriated to that to that extent, right? I mean, imagine 17 drinks. You know, I'd have right now I could have half a glass of wine and I, I don't think I can drive. So, you know, 17 drinks. Killed 16-year-old CJ Hackett. He gets one and a half to four and a half years. That's it. Think about this. You're a parent. You got a child. God forbid. I'm not wishing this on anyone. I'm just saying, put yourself in the family's shoes. What would you like the result to be? One and a half to four and a half years. And I hear from rumors uh, that the bar that uh, he was uh, drinking at, which was uh, a bar called The Alibi, um, which is owned by a uh, uh, um, I'm hearing the mayor, a mayor's brother-in-law, one of his brother-in-laws uh, owns it. And that as a result, they may be going bankrupt and it could possibly be. I'm not sure. This is just what I'm hearing. But I'm sure that there's going to be lawsuits filed if they haven't been already filed that are going to include the establishments that serve the drinks. And, you know, that does hit hard and that can bankrupt the business, you know, and I'm sure they have insurance and stuff that will cover that. But who knows what other liabilities and how much money. Um, you know, they're going to have to pay uh, if there is a, a lawsuit against the uh, establishment as well. So that may be why there are rumors that they could be going bankrupt and that, you know, the owner very pissed off about it. You know, uh, it's unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. But that's that's what it is. Uh, also, this year, something that upset a lot of people, the Yonker City Council, Count, Count, Yonker City Council. Uh, awarding themselves, voting on raises for themselves. Imagine that, right? At a time when people are struggling, the cost of everything going up, so they have to keep up with the cost of living. So they are awarding themselves raises. They voted to give themselves, along with the mayor, um, huge raises, in fact. It's a part-time job. If you feel that you are giving too much time to it, then you need to not run for the position. You can't just expect to increase your salary because somehow you can do that and justify it by saying the cost of living is going up. When it's a part-time job where you make already more than a lot of people make, if, especially if you include the perks that uh, they receive, right? The vehicle, free gas, insurance, maintenance on that vehicle. I just put brakes on my car. Spent a lot of money. A lot of money. I just paid tickets. Do they pay tickets for the city vehicle? Right? The city gave me a bunch of bogus tickets. Over $1,000 I paid. Bogus tickets. All camera stuff. Right? And I know they're bogus because I fought some before and they cleared them without even showing me the video. They didn't want to show me the video. They just knocked off $400. Okay. Don't worry about it. They're no good. Okay. Because they're bogus. They're, you know... Now that they have this new camera system that we've also seen in 2023, right? This high-tech camera system that has plate readers and facial recognition, high-quality cameras that they had up when C.J. Hackett was hit and killed, although they claimed that there were no cameras. Hmm. Right? So anyway, congratulations to the Yonker City Council. Enjoy your raise while people struggle to live, while people have to make big decisions now, whether or not they're going to be able to stay in Yonkers because the rents are going up. Congratulations to you guys. James Cavanaugh, many changes in Yonkers. Uh, James Cavanaugh, the Yonkers uh, Industrial Development Agency president, who's also the husband of Wilson Kimball, the chairwoman of the uh, zoning Board of Appeals, the ZBA, was named the acting commissioner of the planning department. I think that job has now been permanent. Uh, so congratulations to you, James. <laughs> Guys, get they, they, make, they make so much money, man. I should have got into politics from day one, man. It's a very lucrative 
industry. It's a very lucrative business. Sam Borelli, surprisingly, was fired as the commissioner of the building department. Why they fire Sam Borelli? What did he do? He did something up there that they're not telling us. Why did they let Sammy go? I'm not sure. But uh, uh, I'm hearing that Tom Landy, the deputy mayor, is supposed to be replacing him. I'm not sure if that's happened. Let me know if you know that that's happened or not. Got a lot of comments here. My apologies. Uh, but yeah, the deputy mayor supposed to be yonkers is the ghetto of westchester damn i love yonkers you know i really do love yonkers but it's really getting bad and i'm trying to convince my wife to get up out of here Shoprite is rat infested hellhole we need whole foods well that's what i'm hearing they're gonna knock it down you just might get your wish they're gonna knock down that shop right and put a whole foods because i mean at the end of the day you know you can't fully gentrify a place without a whole foods right come on you gotta have whole foods Place them in those luxury apartments. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> the migrants should marry a Spano so they can get a city job. You know, they might be getting city jobs. Uh, I believe in California, undocumented individuals are now becoming police officers. Yeah, they're allowing undocumented individuals to become police officers. Uh, and imitation is the greatest form of flattery. That's what I was going to ask. So these foster families vetted. Is anyone checking up on them? I'm I'm not sure, but you know one of them. Uh, you do. You know one of them, uh, um, and so you. I'm sure you can vouch for that person that they are a good person. That they would treat you know whatever child is in their foster care really well because they have already you know treated them very well. In fact, you know. So I have no doubt that that person. But I've heard of other instances where they were not getting treated well. I'm not sure how they're vetted, but they're making cash two to three thousand dollars extra a month. Man, that's pretty good. Don't do the crime if you can't pay the fine. Absolutely. Right. But when you're connected and, you know, you have people on your side that can speak to judges and district attorneys and stuff like that, you can do the crime and not pay for the time. Right. Or not not do the time. That's how it goes here. We've seen this a lot in Westchester. Drunk driving among city employees is a problem. And. What were they doing just a couple of days ago? Celebrating with none other than 50 Cent. That's right. That's another thing that happened this year in Yonkers in 2023. Hip hop heavyweight and gangster rapper 50 Cent was here in Yonkers at Stu Leonard's promoting his cognac. I thought it was a book signing. I had it all wrong. I thought he was he had did a book. I said my, to my wife, he's doing a book signing. She said he wrote a book. I said 50 does everything, but it's actually promoting his cognac. Branson Cognac, which is an alcoholic beverage. And so all of the elected officials, well, not all, but a lot of them were up there hanging out with 50 Cent. Uh, the mayor, his family took some pictures with them. Uh, Shanae Williams was up there with Deanna Robinson, the future councilwoman of District 1, uh, was up there posing with him in a bottle of his cognac. They also gave him a proclamation along with James Nolan. James Nolan gave 50 Cent a proclamation but what is what does 50 Cent get a proclamation for? You up there promoting liquor. What do you get a proclamation? What is the proclamation for? I just want to know. Is it is it for for being a gangster rapper, being shot nine times and surviving? That deserves a proclamation. Absolutely. One thousand <laughs> percent. Lakeisha will be our next mayor. Knucklehead Dimaggio. Oh, you. Oh, no, no. Uh, I see your name, Knucklehead. Listen, I don't know. Does she want it? And the Nolan kid gave him a proclamation. Imagine that. Yes, I. I some people did say this. Uh, you know, here's what what I'm, what I'm what they're talking about. So you know, James Nolan has been a big proponent. Uh, you know, of anti-gun, uh, anti-gun violence. You know, uh, he, you know, his story uh, of his brother and and his tragic death to due to gun violence. And so people thought that it was you know a bit strange or maybe inappropriate that he would pose with Fifty Cent, give him a proclamation when Fifty Cent promotes gun violence you know he's talked about walking around with a loaded tech nine and you know he was shot nine times he wore bulletproof vests you know and so his lyrics were very you know gangster oriented right and so you know i don't know man this is yonkers politics this is what's just the politics it doesn't make sense ever really so it's hard to figure it out because of that reason it just doesn't make sense right so that's another thing that happened here in the city of yonkers uh um also what i'm hearing Word on the street is uh, that Assemblyman Nader Sage, who I, you know, thought 
was going to become the next superintendent of the Yonkers Public Schools. I would have bet money on it. I hear is not going to be the next superintendent of the Yonkers Public Schools, citing his age. They're saying he's too uh, old. Uh, he's already, you know, past 70, 71, 72 years of age. Um, in fact, I'm hearing that they are looking for someone that's not connected to Yonkers. There, there actually uh, was a national search. So the next superintendent, if you know what I'm hearing is true, could be someone from another state, right? From a completely another state. Um, and I don't know, is that going to do you know, any good for the Yonkers Public Schools? What do you think about that? Definitely, we need someone that's not 71, 72 years of age. You know, um, you know, we need someone a lot younger. Uh, also, Vinny Spano was reappointed as the Yonkers City Clerk in 2023. Uh, who, by the way, I saw at the Tuckahoe shop, right? Uh, Tasha Diaz in 2023 attempted to award a no-bid contract to her campaign manager, Frank Jarris and his ACES communication and consulting company. But I hear word on the street is that Lakeisha Collins Bellamy said, nah, -uh, I don't want to be a part of this and made sure that they took it off the agenda. And so that pissed off, uh, you know, Tasha Diaz and her crew. And then Tasha Diaz played the, I didn't know whose company that was. But if you read the description of what they were going to do, for the city council. I mean, it's was total control of the city council, all the promotion, the marketing, all the information, the literature that they were going to put out. So basically, they were going to be in charge of propaganda for the Yonkers City Council, right? Tasha Diaz is campaign manager, who is also the campaign manager of Deanna Robinson, Shanae Williams, right? And others, you know, has a good control of the Yonkers City Council, which is why they vote a certain way all the time, right? He's heavily influencing them. And I don't mean Frank Jarris. I mean his dad, Zahi Jarris. But if you look at the description of what this company was supposed to do, it's scary. It's scary that they would have allowed these individuals to do this and then have the city taxpayers pay for it on top of that. A $60,000 a year contract. No bid. And she said, oh, I did my job by pulling it off and it wasn't investigated. That's nonsense. Up in Orange County, a... Uh, an official did exactly just that. And he was investigated and they asked that he resign. But not here in Yonkers. No, you get away with doing it. Not once, but twice. Tasha Diaz tried to award a no bid city contract to friends, close friends and supporters of hers for bulletproof windows in all the schools. Is it that dangerous in Yonkers? Do we really need bulletproof windows? No, that's scary. Now we definitely got to get up out of here. I mean, imagine the people who are looking to move to Yonkers and all these luxury apartments going to put their kids in a school that has bulletproof windows. One of the main questions that they ask when they come here is how the school district. Many of them are asking for more charter schools, in fact. But anyway, going back to Tasha Diaz, who's actually the chairwoman of the education committee, which is why she was attempting to do this, right, was not investigated for that either. She even had individuals come up in support of it. People like Tim Hodges, former police chief. People like James Nolan. People like the head of security for the Yonkers Public School and even a guy from Westchester Corrections. I'm not sure why he came down. But she had this whole show. Multi-million dollar contract. No investigation. Maybe 2024 will bring upon an investigation finally. What do you say? Somebody going to do their job up in law enforcement? I mean, it seems like they do their job up in Orange County. And CSCA 9169, still no contract? Their leader, President Al B. Shore, I'm sorry, Alberto Velasquez, once again is out of the country in Cuba smoking Cuban cigars with none other than convicted sex offender and head of the Yonkers voice, Rue Ross. That's right. The two of them are somewhere in Cuba smoking cigars. Meanwhile, his union that he heads still has no contract. And we're going into 2024 now. The only union without a contract. Bottom of the totem pole, get treated the worst. Their president seems to have all this money to go on vacation all the time, man. Making that dough. At one point, they had him in an asbestos-infested office uh, in the basement, and now he's the head of the CSEA's 
9169, traveling in helicopters and all over. Isn't that great? Meanwhile, his members are out here with no contract. You know, most of them don't like him, but some do. The few that attended the party, I see, you know, because not everyone's going to, you know, hates the guy, right? Hopefully you're not that horrible of a person where everyone hates you. Uh, but, you know, that's messed up. We're going into 2024, no contract for the folks. Well, you know what to do when next election comes. Make sure you vote for someone else. I say Jose Diaz. He's a member of CSEA 9169. And I know Jose Diaz will fight for you guys. But you have to come out and vote. Don't be intimidated. I know they do all these crazy tactics. But you have to come out and vote. Otherwise, this is how you're going to continue to get treated. You have to vote. You guys are a large union. Come on. So, folks, uh, but again, that's what was going on in 2023. Uh, I'm sure other things happened. 50 Cent murders somebody every other line, and our elected officials takes pics with him like he's the Pope and gave him proclamations. Yeah, I just, what did they give him proclamations for, though? I just want to know. Like, what, what, like, you know, there's so many people that do a lot of good things, right? They don't get nothing. People go after them. They get retaliated on because they speak on things that, you know, people don't want to be spoken on. They want it to be kept hush hush. And then they give individuals that do nothing for Yonkers proclamations, promoting liquor, promote more drinking and driving for our city employees. Right. Like the individual who was caught driving drunk, crashing into uh, a resident here in the city of Yonkers after he went down the wrong way on Central Avenue now has a hundred and seventy four thousand dollar job with the Yonkers public schools. And so that's why we mentioned these things, because it's not OK. It doesn't show, you know, or represent the city. Well, it's not a good image. It seems like you have to have some kind of, you know, conviction or be some kind of criminal. Right. Or some type of degenerate in order to get ahead here. It's what it seems like. Because a lot of these individuals that you see posing and taking pictures, they have these backgrounds that you can Google and people Google them and then post them. And then you get people that get all irate and, you know, go crazy with their four letter words. And are very vulgar and nasty. Right. I, I don't know. So, you know, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's not how it's supposed to be. You know, again, I've been in other places, lived other places. I've never seen you know, such unprofessionalism among elected officials, you know, such ghettoness among elected officials. It's just unbelievable how certain individuals can get elected. All right. And that makes me question the, you know, legitimacy of our elections. It really does. I mean, how are these individuals elected? This is important business here. And, you know, we have a clown show. Anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. Happy New Year. May you be blessed. Be well, be healthy. God bless you. God bless those who support and God bless those who don't support. God is good always and he will be great in 2024. And I'm very excited for the next year to come. I'm still here. Just want to you know, let you guys know. I know some people are wondering, where'd you go? I want to spend time with the family. I'm enjoying that, trying to eat, you know, and get some rest and gain a little weight here and get ready. Because I see Alberto, you over there with your boxing gloves. What you getting ready for? Anyway, folks, have a beautiful and blessed uh, weekend. Enjoy your holiday. Stay safe and no drinking and driving. Don't drink none of that Branson cognac and drive, right? Elected officials, know y'all got some free drinks. Ready, wait. Nick Politics with my dad, Freddie Vasquez. Yo. It's with my dad, Freddie Vasquez. Thank you for watching Basement Politics with my husband, Freddie Vasquez. Thank you for watching Basement Politics. Mr. Rumor lied to me, and I don't vote for the person that lied to me. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this quick because I'm greedy and I want somebody to buy a chicken. So thank you. More to come in 2024, folks. It's going to get a little spicier. Yeah. Just wait on it. Not going anywhere. Ready, wait,